We've had the Pulsar 2 reviewed in detail on our channel and later this year, the Polestar 3 is gonna start hitting our roads. That is then gonna be followed up by the Polestar 4. This is gonna be a model that is gonna be very popular with a lot of buyers. This is the one that a lot of people have been looking for. It is a little bit longer, a little bit higher, and a little bit wider than the Polestar 2. And we're gonna go into a little bit more detail later on in the video about what it's like inside, in particular about how the design has shaped this car. It does have a lot of very interesting design-led features. You have this split headlight design, which is becoming the face of Polestar models. There's going to be LED versions and matrix versions, depending on exactly which model grade you go for. There's a lot of other nice little interesting details. When you walk up and unlock the car, the Polestar logo illuminates from below. It's a nice little design feature that they've made in, and that's very much in keeping with Polestar. This is a design-led brand, but there's a lot of features, so let's get into it. Now, while this is an SUV, it has a very low front end, and you can see in the side profile how it has that sloping roof line. There'll be 20 inch wheels as standard, but you do have an option of 21s, and the performance pack has 22 inch wheels as well. You get nice features like flush door handles, all the glass is nice and flush here as well. That not only looks good, it reduces wind noise when it's on the move. You've got pillarless doors as well, but it's really the interesting feature this design happens around here, because what they've done is normally where this starts to slope down when you get these kind of coupe style SUVs, cuts into rear passenger headroom. What they've done is they've kind of shifted all this a little bit further back. So the support and structural beams that run across sit behind the rear occupants. But that means you now have this element, which is probably the most divisive and most talked about feature of the Polestar 4. It's the fact that it doesn't have any rear window. There's no rear glass. It's all enclosed. You have a camera based system instead, which feeds into a live feed on your rear view mirror. This is gonna be such a distinctive car from the rear, you won't mistake it for anything else. Aside from the fact that it has a very slick light animation when you walk up and approach the car, you have this full width slender light bar goes all the way across. Just in here is where your high mounted third brake light is as well. And you've a lot of little aero appendages. These just help add a few kilometers to the range of the car as well. And right dead center on the rear, you have that Polestar logo as well. But really when you see it right from behind with this all enclosed area, people are gonna absolutely talk about this car. This is going to be a huge talking point of it. And as we mentioned, this is where you have your cameras up top. One of them is to show the live feed of what goes on behind. And there's actually a second camera there as well, which is linked to the ADAS system. So it always monitors and can detect if there's a risk of a rear collision, it can then deploy extra safety features such as pre-tensioning your seatbelts. All versions get an electrically operated tailgate. And there's actually a reason for that, not just because it's a good spec, because this is such a design-led company, they wanted to ensure that it had a cleaner design. With a manual tailgate, when you design it, you've got this kind of over slam feature that you have to build in and accommodate for, bigger tolerances. They didn't want to do that or didn't want to have that, so they made them all electric. Now that is a fantastic attention to detail. When it comes to the boot itself, well, it is actually a pretty wide, nice, generous aperture that you have here. Loading things in is pretty easy. You've got this polished metal here as well, so it's gonna stand up really well to getting heavy items in and out. The floor, you can have over two levels, so you can actually drop down the boot floor if you wanna have bulkier items in. Overall space is 526 liters, but you can drop the rear seats. They've got a 60-40 split, and that gives you 1,536 liters. There's also 31 liters underneath the floor. This shelf, when you do want to fold down the rear seats, just clips out, and you can actually store it underneath the seat in front. Incidentally, it's a lighter color, to reflect the ambient lighting inside as well. I also really like how they've imprinted that Polestar logo into the boot lid. You do also have a frunk here as well. So underneath the front of the Polestar 4, it's a double pull 
on the latch there and you've got a small compartment in here. It's only 15 liters, but that is enough that you can get your charging cables in to use when you're out in the move. And you've got the usual warning triangle in there as well. Both the single and dual motor versions will use a 100 kilowatt hour battery. That comes from CATL and it's a 94 kilowatt hour usable battery. In terms of charging, it will have standard AC charging of up to 22 kilowatts, DC at up to 200 kilowatts, meaning you can go from 10 to 80% in around 30 minutes. The dual motor version has 400 kilowatts, which is a 544 horsepower and 686 Newton meters. That makes it the fastest pole star there has been to date. Zero to 100 takes just 3.8 seconds and the top speed is 200 kilometers an hour. The overall range is gonna be up to 580 kilometers. For the single motor rear drive version, that gets a 200 kilowatt output 272 horsepower, 343 Newton meters, and the acceleration falls back to a more modest 7.1 seconds, while the top speed remains 200 kilometers an hour. Incidentally, that range also grows to 610 kilometers. On the inside, there's a really kind of cozy feel from a lot of these fabrics. There's a nice mixture of light colors, tactile fabrics. So you can see here this kind of woven material on the doors, it extends all the way across the front. It looks really, really nice. You've got this ultra thin LED strips here. This ambient lighting runs all the way through. Now you can't really see it in this bright studio, but there's a lot of different colors and different ambiances you can get. Actually, when you look at the touchscreen, a lot of those are actually themed based on the planets of the solar system. Bit of a novelty, but it's actually pretty cool. And one feature I really like is as you scroll through them, not only does it obviously change, it shows you the different planet that it reflects on, but you even get actual information about the planets. That's so pretty cool. And I think kids in the background, I love this feature, really neat idea. But of course, practically, what do you have? Well, it's a nice, simple three spoke steering wheel here. You've got controls built into it. You've got a 10 inch, digital display in front of the driver. It's nice and thin, so it's very easy to read. And really what I like about the Polestar layout is it's such a kind of, I don't want, I want to overuse the term minimalist, but it's just the layout of all the graphics and everything you need is very simple. All just the purest things of what you want. You've got a head up display, which is available as well. And you've got a 15 inch touchscreen here. Great menu system. It's got Google functionality built into it. So the maps, everything like that is all done. And obviously once you're logged in and paired up with it, it's great. It's gonna, when you get in, it'll know when you wanna go home or anything like that. So that's a really useful feature. You've got air vents just in here. Again, very subtle how they do it, but it's a nice setup. In the center console here, you've got a double cup holders. You've got a single rotary controller here for adjusting your volume. There's a 15 watt wireless charger. There's four USB chargers throughout, including one 50 watt charger. So you could be able to charge up your laptop if you need to on the move. The overall layout is very nice in here. The way they've kind of leaned the windscreen back means you've got fairly slender A pillars here as well. So your all, all around visibility is very good on the move. Of course, rear visibility, well, you've got that rear facing camera here, but you do also have a camera uh, mirror function. So if you do wanna see, keep an eye on who's in the back, you just flick that switch and it'll give you a normal mirror view as well. Now, speaking of the back, let's go see what it's like. Here in the back, this is a big talking point with this car and you can see just how much headroom I have here. The way they have shifted that roof line back means I have a lot of room in here. Now, I'm about average height, I'm about five foot nine, but still I can sit up here, I've got plenty of headspace and because this glass roof doesn't have any blinds in it, it just automatically tints or has a kind of chromatic effect. It means that there's no blind system that's robbing another inch of headspace. So that's a really good thing. And actually sitting here, the glass roof starts from behind my head, it goes all the way out. So you get a great field of visibility back here as well. Something rear passengers are more than likely gonna comment on, but on a practical level, there's a lot of room too. It's a pretty flat floor all the way across. 
this driver's seat is set up from my driving position. So I'm effectively sitting behind myself and I have a lot of room. I can just about stretch out my arms. I have an awful lot of knee room here, which is good. And there's just enough space that I can get my feet in underneath the seat in front if I do want to stretch out. Now, the two outer seats are very comfortable and they also have stuff like heated functions and easily accessible ice fix points, but there is a fairly wide central seat as well. So even if you're gonna have three adults back here, it should be pretty reasonable when it comes to space. However, if you don't have somebody in the middle, you can then pop this center seat down, folds down, you have pop out two cup holders that come out from the top. You've got a little tray area here so you can put little odds and ends here. Or maybe if you've got something charging because you've got two USB-C charge ports down there. But also here on the side, it shows how you can adjust electrically the level of recline for both of the outer rear seats. So that's another useful function to have in the back of the Polestar 4. So that's our first look through in detail the Polestar 4. It arrives later in the summer of 2024. If you want to know more about the car, head over to our website. It's completecar.ie. You'll find it linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.